Good morning and welcome to Command Your Morning. My name is Charles Karanja. Jesus loves you and we give God thanks. The Bible says that indeed his compassion does not fail. His mercies are new every morning and we are grateful that we have this day. I'm going to be talking to you about the power of destructive thoughts and I'm going to be speaking to you giving you 12 different thoughts that you need to remove from your life if you're ever going to expect to go forward. Before we get into the Word of God, um, we're going to be listening, we're going to be spending some time giving God some praise. I urge you participate, don't just listen, open your mouth and give Him some praise. See you in a few moments. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7, For as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. Eat and drink. He says to you, but his heart is not with you. The previous verse, verse 6, speaks about the fact that do not eat the bread of a miser nor desire his delicacies. Um, and so verse 7 is where it continues, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. I need you to understand that your thoughts are critical. How you think of yourself, how you see yourself, how you, the thoughts that are filling your brain waves, uh, that which is flowing through you, it is affecting your destiny. Um, science has finally uh, come to a place of telling us, and they're doing uh, constantly, constantly doing a lot of research into the kind of thoughts that we think, uh, into the kind of things that we are talking about. And they now, science now says that, on average, the person will think uh, about 60,000 thoughts in a day. They say the average person will think between uh, 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day, uh, telling me that you, we, we need thinkers. The person who's really a thinker is thinking more thoughts a day. Um, in fact, science also has said that uh, we speak to ourselves approximately 150 to 300 words every minute. We are constantly speaking to ourselves. We are constantly telling ourselves something. Uh, where when your brain is functioning at its highest gear, you are thinking about 2,500 thoughts per hour. That's a lot of thoughts. You're, that's approximately 42 thoughts per minute. Uh, I mean, think about this. It's like when you're making tea in a sufuria, in a pot, and you, and you, and you, and you put the tea leaves. There's, there's a lot going on in there making the tea. And, and for many people, they don't understand that the tea, the tea that's inside in the, in the pot that they're making the tea with uh, is like the thoughts that they have in their life. It's beginning to produce color. It's beginning to produce taste uh, that suddenly is what is filling them. And you need to apply a filter so that you can be able to come to the place that God has ordained for you. Experts say it's not so much about the quantity of thoughts that you think. It's about the quality of the thoughts that you think. Uh, science, uh, scientists have also told us that approximately 90% percent of the thoughts that you think today you will think them tomorrow so what you're thinking today 90 percent of it you are thinking yesterday and that goes on over and over 80 percent of the thoughts that we think are supposedly said to be negative which is quite ironical that many times we're thinking thoughts that are coming in and are saying this is it do you know negative thoughts are what produce um negative chemicals into our bodies. If you keep thinking, I am sick, I am sick. If that's what you're keeping on thinking, then sickness is what happens. Uh, do you know that whenever the doctors address somebody who's been diagnosed with cancer, the first thing a doctor tells the person is, you need to address your mind. Uh, you need to address yourself. You need to start speaking thoughts of good uh, because that will help to fight the cancer cells in your body. Your body is listening to what you are saying. Your body is listening to what you are thinking. Your body is th listening to every thought that goes through you. I need to keep. You need. I need to keep, keep reminding myself that I am greater. You need to keep reminding yourself that greatness is within you. You need to keep reminding yourself that you know what? No matter the challenges, I am an overcomer. No matter what is happening, I am going forward. No matter what may be happening, I am on top. No matter the things that are happening around, you need to keep reminding 
reminding yourself and keep saying it to yourself that guess what victory is mine I will arise I will shine this is my hour this is my season this is my day I walk in abundance stop looking and thinking according to your bank account think create thoughts within yourself that create a farm that create an atmosphere of great things happening within you open your mind to thinking thoughts that are positive uh, learn to talk to yourself uh, the things that God has ordained for yourself that's why God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 meditate on the word of God uh, because when you meditate on it it frames your thinking you stop seeing the giants you start seeing the possibilities you have the potential to transform yourself by changing your mental habits. When you change your mental habits, you will change your life around. And I want to speak to you about 12 damaging thoughts that are damaging many lives. Number one, complaining and mourning. <clears throat> many people have thoughts constantly of complaint. When you talk to them, you press them. All you hear is complaint. When you associate with them, you, you, you can even hear their mind. You can, you can hear them even when they talk. It's always complaining. Nothing is working. Everything is hard. Everything is impossible. Now I don't have everything about them. And when they're thinking like that, when your thinking is like that, your life becomes exactly like that. Listen to me. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 19, that God told the children of Israel, I will give you the fruit of your thoughts. So if you think bad, you will have bad. If you think well, you will be well. Do away with thoughts of complaining and mourning. Discipline yourself to look for things to be grateful for. Discipline yourself to come to that place of constantly thinking thoughts of goodness, thoughts of greatness. Number two, depression and despair. We're living in a world where mental health is of such seriousness today. Many of the times I have people who call me, even myself, sometimes I'm inundated with so many things happening that I feel depression and despair coming, but I've learned to arm my mind, to, to guard my mind, and to sober myself up and to say, no, Jesus is alive. I've learned to keep speaking to myself. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. John chapter 10, verse 10. But Jesus said, I have come to give life and life in abundance. Even in the midst of when things are tough, I have come to constantly keep thinking, God, the life of God is within me. The life of God is flowing out of me. Depression is not my portion. Depression is not my portion. I refuse to be depressed. I refuse to despair. Bible says in Psalms 42 verse 5, the psalmist was crying out and said, Why are you cast down, O my soul? Speak to yourself and constantly remind yourself, have thoughts that are not putting you down. Have thoughts that are lifting you up. Three, self-defacement. Many times we have thoughts that are constantly looking, belittling ourselves. I remember when I was in growing up in high school, my, they, they, I was a big boy, very big boy. So they called me many names. They, they called me Fati. They called me all this and this and this. And I could have immediately, I, I realized after some time that I viewed myself by what others are calling myself. But slowly by slowly, as I've grown up over time, I've come to realize, no, God created me in his image, not in the image of a doctor or of a bully. I speak to myself. I stand in front of the mirror and I look at myself and I say, mm -mm, fine boy, no pimple. I'm handsome. I'm great. I'm going places. I stand in front of a mirror and I confidently posture myself that indeed uh, I am good. Uh, the God who made me has made me great. God has good plans for me. My future is brighter. In fact, it's so bright. Uh, I, normally have a, uh, I normally have some sunglasses by my mirror so that I can put them on to say it's so bright that I need sunglasses because of the brightness of what God has ordained for me. 
learn to speak to yourself good thoughts. Number four, do away with thoughts of anger and rage. Many times we listen to the news, so and so killed so and so. The spouse was killed by a spouse. Family members are fighting over land, over this. Family members are killing so and so. I read a story recently in the newspaper of, of family members who are planning to take away a parent. Why? So that they could take the land and sell it off and get cash. Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Do not give place to the devil, verse 27. I urge you think thoughts that are pure. Do away with thoughts of anger. Anytime you're angry, anytime you, you feel rage welling within you because of, of that which is happening, no, speak, begin to speak joy, begin to speak love. Let, let love fill you. Number five, can't do mentality. So many people, the thought damaging their destiny is, I can't do it. You and I are living in a world where we are seeing change. Change is happening before our very eyes. Change is happening. And people with a can't-do mentality will not be able to make it. But you need to rise and say, I can do it. First Samuel chapter 17 shows us that when Goliath stood in front of the army of the children of Israel, Saul and everybody panicked and they hid. But here comes small, young boy, David, who looked and he said, no, I can take this on. I don't know what's standing in front of you. I don't know what's filling your mind and you're saying, I can't do it. No, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Look at yourself in the mirror and declare it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. The promotion can be yours. You can study, get a new degree. You can do a new course. You can do, open a new business. You can get a new idea that will take you to a new place. Open your mind and declare it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do away with a can't-do mentality. Six, some people have allowed sorrow and sadness to have a parking in their minds. Do not sorrow. Don't allow sorrow to sit in your heart that you cannot be able to think straight. Have you ever met some people when you talk with them, you just feel sad? It's because in their mind, sadness has been planted and sadness has grown and sadness has become fruit in their life. So when you are around them, all you feel is sad. Learn to have thoughts of joy, of happiness, of good things, of favor, of love, and God will do great things. Seven, helplessness or hopelessness. Never entertain the thought that you are hopeless. Never entertain the thought that you are helpless. David said in Psalm 63 verse 7, because you have been my help, God, has been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I rejoice. You are not hopeless. You are not helpless. One of the times in this great land when results come out, many people feel hopeless because they've not been able to make the grade to go to the university. And I like telling many people, no, you're not hopeless. There are many ways to skin a cart. So you need to understand that just because one route is closed, it doesn't mean you're hopeless. It doesn't mean you're helpless. No, it just means there's another way we can go around it. A young lady met me and told me, I listened to you saying I'm not hopeless. 
my results had come out. I hadn't qualified for university, but now I'm in the university studying the course that I wanted. Why? Because I well took a step back and studied for a diploma, and suddenly I got accepted to a place to do a degree. You're not hopeless. Don't ever think you're helpless, that nobody can help you. No, God is more than able to help you. God is more than able to send people who can help you. So please stand in front of a mirror and speak to yourself. I'm not hopeless. I'm not helpless. Look at yourself and declare it. No, I am not hopeless. The world is in need of people who have hope. The world, Jeremiah, in the book of Job, chapter, th um, chapter 33, it speaks of the fact that they are messengers of hope. You and I need to come to that place where we look and we look around and we're looking to see where do I go so that I can fill somebody's tank of hope. Why? Because the world is constantly telling people you're hopeless, but I need to keep thinking and I need to keep telling you and I came to remind you you're not hopeless. So do away with the thought of hopelessness. Number eight, don't dwell on regret and bad memories. When you sit down and you keep regretting, when you keep thinking to yourself, regret, 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 and all you keep doing is thinking behind, there is a reason why God put your eyes in front it's so that you can see forward when you constantly fill your mind with thoughts of regret you will live in the past and God is not just a God of the past but he's a God of the future and the future is bright in front of you you need to do away with regret. You need to come up and rise and, and remind yourself. The Bible says in Isaiah 43 verse 18, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, God is promising, I will do a new thing. Yes, I made a mistake, and I've got many mistakes that I've made, but I refuse to allow bad memories to make my life. I have plenty of regrets. Sometimes I look at myself and I think, God, really? How foolish was I? How bad have I been? But I have come to a place of understanding that the one who forgives, he separates, he sends, he forgives me. And when he forgives, it's so far. He sends the, he, he forgives me that it's a, as far as the east is from the west. So I have got no point regretting until I cannot go forward. Regret is like a chain that ties you to your past, that stops you from going into your future. Regret, do away with it. Do away with regret and embrace that which God has ordained for you. Nine, heart and pain. Let me say this. I'm not a saint. I'm not one who's lived a life that I've not heart and pained many. My mom and dad could tell you that. However, my mom and dad will also tell you that I am quick to saying sorry because I refuse to allow heart and pain to hold my life forever. Let go of the heart. Let me speak to fathers and mothers. Your children have hurt you. Let it go. Let me speak to children. Your parents have hurt you. Your siblings have hurt you. Let it go. Because if your mind is constantly filled with heart and pain, you're building an atmosphere for bitterness. And when bitterness sets in, you're done. You're headed the wrong direction. Let me help somebody who has been hot and full of pain to know that Jesus was hot Yet he looked at those who are nailing him on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. I urge you to be like Jesus. Forgive them. Let it go. Don't dwell on it. Go forward. Ten, 
don't dwell on thoughts of disappointment. Disappointment is an appointment that you have missed. It's okay. It's not the only one. I like telling myself, Charles, the fact that you're alive means there's an appointment that God has for you. So goodbye to disappointments. Numbers 13. We see the children of Israel saying they will not go into Canaan. It was a disappointment for Caleb and Joshua who had been to the land. They now had to walk another 40 years. But God set it within them that they would enter the land. If they had allowed the disappointment of not being able to go into going, they would never have been able to enter the land. But they did not allow disappointment to imprison them. 11. Thoughts of sickness and disease. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, he was wounded for transgression. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. I pray to God that your mind will not be thinking of sickness, but that you will take the report of the Lord, and it is what you will think. The Bible says in the beginning of Isaiah 53, whose report will you believe? Whose report are you thinking about? Are you thinking about the cancer that the doctor is saying? Are you thinking about the diabetes? Or are you thinking about the fact that God has made you healed? God has already provided for you. God has already made a way. Choose to think thoughts of health. Choose to fill your mind, yourself, your everything, your family, your finances with thoughts of health. So that when you go, you go thinking healthy. Twelve, do away with thoughts of fear and anxiety. I woke up the other day and I was shaking, I was trembling, I'd had a sound and I was like, no, I'm not, I'm a lion. Why am I fearing? What? I'm as bold as a lion. I refuse to entertain fear because when you entertain fear, you're bound by it. Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. God wants the best for you. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Go to God and let everything, whatever is causing you to be anxious, place it before God. Whatever is causing you to have fear, place it before God and be set free in the name of Jesus. Scientists have told us that it takes 21 days to change a habit. I urge you to take 20, the next 21 days and deal with those 12 damaging thoughts and you will discover that your life has gone farther ahead than ever before. I pray that you will realize that when you fill your mind with good, good will come out. They say garbage in, garbage out. So what are you filling your mind with? Give your mind the right fuel and you will see how far you will go, even farther than you ever expected to go. I'll see you in a few minutes.